What's your name? Trey. And what do you do? So I'm a second year law student at University of Michigan Law School. So I'm pretty much going to school to be a corporate lawyer, to do private equity law um, and data privacy law. That's my main focus right now. So data privacy is basically, you know, we hear a lot about artificial intelligence and things like that. It's basically how we can keep um, you know, like your data or my data, off the dark web. you know, off the dark web, you know, out of the hands of people that can use it for, you know, scamming purposes, things like hackers. that, you know, hackers, things like the other um, countries trying to get to our data, things like that, um, and making sure that uh, corporations aren't using your data for, you know, things that they shouldn't be using it for, pretty much. If somebody hack you, we're going to take care of them. We're going to take care of them. Uh, make sure you get your data back. Make sure you get paid if they use your information, um, you know, soon do things like that. So... That's kind of what I'm interested in. That's what I studied um, when I was an undergrad. It's been it, it's been a crazy one, honestly, man. Um, I didn't really know that I wanted to do law school until like late 2020, honestly. Um, I was originally going to be an accountant. That was boring, so uh, I couldn't do it. Uh, I kind of like waltzed my way through uh, undergrad. I didn't really take classes seriously like I should have. Um, I got distracted by you know, playing and uh, football and you know all the other stuff that comes to undergrad. And so when COVID happened, I kind of just you know took some time to figure out what I wanted to do and uh, ended up getting my master's degree at University of Maryland, which is where I'm from. And uh, there was a law program. I loved it. And then I decided to, to try to get into a good law school. And uh, here I am. What's the difference between uh, Maryland and Detroit? Uh, not Detroit, Ann Arbor. Man, um, it's extremely different. I mean, it, it really is just a, a different type of, of vibe. Ann Arbor is just a straight college town. You know, people are here from all over the place. They're here for school. Um, there's not really much else in Ann Arbor other than University of Michigan. And where I'm from in Maryland, um, you know, DMV, a lot of people, a lot of different cultures. Uh, and in uh, Ann Arbor, it's just a few different cultures, but it's, it's pretty much in one color. But um, it's a good experience. The people are nice. It's a little different than what I'm used to. I also went to undergrad in New York, which is like the opposite of Ann Arbor. So it's been a good experience so far. I was in New York. You said, dang, I know you went to New York. Yeah, I was, I was in New York for a little bit. Um, it was good, man. I, I like New York. I plan on going back. New York's one of those places where you either love it or you hate it. And uh, I happen to enjoy it a lot and the people and I'm very big proponent of, of minding your own business and they do that really well in New York so really yeah to be such a big a big city yeah. people in New York City actually mind their own business you walk through the subway I and mean, you walk through the, the city you're on the subway people doing crazy stuff um, you just put your headphones in look at your phone um, you know, remind your business, which is, if I can appreciate. They've been known to, to not be the nicest people, but you know, um, that's okay. I don't need everyone to be to be nice or like stop me and say hi. You know, I'm there to get some work done and do stuff like that. So, yeah. so you were working as a lawyer in uh, New York, so I think that's like the pinnacle. So like that, that's the goal. Is like I have a offer right now from a firm in New York to do um, some stuff this summer, and then hopefully I get a job offer, um, a full time job offer after uh, this upcoming summer. And uh, the office is right next to Central Park. It's a great firm. I'm really excited uh, to do that work. But uh, yeah, New York City lawyer. Damn. There's not a lot of black people specifically black men is this less than I think it's less than three percent um of like the attorneys in big law which is what they call it at these big firms are, are black men and i think um the similar number for, for black women so it's a really tough space to get into if you're uh, african-american was there between big law and small law so big law is basically these firms that have i think it's more than 250 or 500 attorneys, right. um, something like that. I don't know the exact number, but the firm I'm going to has, I think, around 1,100 or 1,200 attorneys. So it's a lot. It's a lot of attorneys. Um, and they do a lot of different work, and they are law firms that have offices in different parts of the country. So, for example, the firm I'm going to, I'm going to the New York office, which is their headquarters, but they have firms. They have an office in L.A., Chicago, D.C. Um, they have some international, like in Hong Kong and things like that. So they're all over the place. Why do you think that is? Why do you think like a lot of black dudes don't pursue this 
it, it's tough to get into. There's a lot of barriers to, to entry. And I think that's on purpose. They, they don't want a lot of us in the space uh, trying to build generational wealth and, and do all this stuff. So to, to get to law school in general, you have to do, you know, at least, you know, undergrad, you have to take uh, the LSAT, which is a standardized test. Um, you got to get a certain score on it um, to get into these really good law schools. And then you have to, if you get into those good law schools, you still have to like network, you got to get good grades and then apply to these firms. And even then they, they still might not, um, you know, take you in and accept those, uh, those applications. So it's, it's very, very tough. Um, so if you don't go to what's known as like the top 14 law schools, T14 law schools, it's very hard to get one of those big law positions. Damn. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very tough and I feel very fortunate. Do you feel that... Do you feel that in the inner cities that they it's meant for us not to be able to take a standardized test well? Yeah, I, I mean, to those resources to test just to take the LSAT, just to apply for it or to, to sign up for it is there's a fee for that, and it's it's how much is it? I think it's I can't remember. I think when I did it, it was like it might have been two hundred dollars just to sign up for the test. And then a lot of people get prep courses so that they can um, study for it or get a tutor, and that's even more money. And it's um, very hard to get a, a high score on that test. Um, and you know, standardized tests in general aren't really made for people of, of, of our color. They're made by people who you know, are, are have very different backgrounds, I should say. So. Uh, it's, 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 it's very tough to, to get a good grade, to even sign up for it, to study for it. Um, so I think, and a lot of people don't even know that big law exists. You know, they think of a lawyer, they just think of somebody who's in court, you know, who has um, you know, a public defender or something like that. They don't even know that some of these attorneys are uh, you know, very high level doing like big mergers and things like that. So it's also an, an information um, problem. We just don't know about it really um, even other people in law school don't really know about it so it, it's not always uh, accessible Tariq St. Patrick he got big law small law so he that's really that's more like um, I guess smaller like single practitioner law they, they're not dang he dropping racks that's what I'm saying <laughs> it, it's it's, the, it's to the point those, those big law like I said you have over a thousand attorneys sometimes you know working on stuff across the world different time zones things like that so it's it's very i mean it really gets crazy they do all types of law things that you might not even heard of things are just up and coming ai stuff um private equity finance things like that so it's uh there's a lot of money to be made in in, in big law if you can if you can get there and part of my um, reason for being in the space is to open it up for other people um, who might not know about it, who, who think that they can't get to it. Because I didn't think I could get to it, to be honest with you. I never thought I, I'd be able to um, get to one of these top firms. You know, I, I'm pretty fortunate in that I have a really good support system. My family is very supportive of me. Um, I taking the LSAT, trying to get that good score. I probably studied for six, seven months while I was getting my master's degree, and I just buckled down. Every day I would just go to the basement, study the, the books, take practice tests so I could get a good grade on it. And so I could, I knew it was an, it was an investment. It, it cost some money, um, but luckily I was working at the time. So I invested that money into getting a good grade and getting to, you know, those applications out. Um, and my background helped too. Um, I, and this is, this is advice for anybody who wants to get into law school. Law schools like people who are who are different, have different backgrounds. If you play a sport, if you volunteer a lot, you know, if you're in student government, things like that. If you took some time off from school, they like that. They like people who have different backgrounds, speak a different language, things like that. Um, so that can help you on your application. If you're trying to get into law school. Same thing with these big firms. They like they like diversity now. So um, anything that makes you stand out is very very helpful. So they they are really okay they really big on frat parties and things like that. Very much so. Very Especially in the summertime. That. They yeah. man, you can see them outside at like 3 p.m. on a Wednesday. 3 a.m. sometimes. 3 p.m. 3 a.m. on a Wednesday, going crazy. <laughs> yeah. Outside drinking. They be doing at whatever. the park all the care. time over by the VA. Shoot, how you stay focused? How you stay focused from all the parties and shit? You know. Nah. 
I had to get out of my system before I came here. You know, you got to come here with a, with a goal in mind. Uh, you know, I'm not here to, you know, party. I'm here to, for, like, my future to make sure my family's straight. But, yeah, I just, you, just, you got to stay focused. You got to remember what really what's important. You know, it doesn't, doesn't mean I don't party every now and then. But, you know, I'm definitely here because um, I'm trying to make sure I'm, I'm getting my money right and I'm getting my family straight, you know. Okay, first you know, question is, hey, what kind of head person are you? Uh, <laughs> the average person that is going to law school and about to finish, they closer to 30. Right. Or closer to 35. But hell, yeah, they closer to 40. So what advice can you give a young man coming up? They about to, you know, they they, they see the they see this TV show. They see uh, Lincoln Lawyer. Right. They see, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, stuff, that influences right. them, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So what advice can you give to the, to the young folks? Cause they, look, you still young. Yeah. So that's y'all are around the same age. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I would say, first of all, it's it's never too late to get into it. You know, some people who are in law school, you know, they did a lot of different things before they got into law school. Right. You know, they had two, three careers before they got into law school. I have a classmate who's, you know, forty. I think he's like forty-two. Okay. And he's a teacher. But in terms of the young people specifically, I would say it's it's not easy. But it's not as hard as Just people want to want you to, right. to believe it. Right. it. It is, you know, you can do it. They are looking for people in this space, you know, that have diverse backgrounds, that come from places that are, are unique, that have unique skills. There's diversity scholarships, you know, for people of color, right. um, for LGBTQ individuals as well. I mean, there's, there's so many opportunities. And I would say, just get curious, you know, research it, you know, Google it, and it starts with that. You know, I didn't know anything about big law or anything like that, right. you know, a few years ago. So I think there's a lot of people who try to get into it right out of undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, That's about 28, 29, 30. So, so like they, oh, they'll, really? they'll, they'll get into it. They'll, they'll, they'll start the first year at 22. They'll start the first year at 22. That's the one that's um, dedicated. Though. Yeah, they, they just, they just, that's what they want to do yeah, or that's, that's what they think they should do. Right. I would personally say I didn't do that. I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, you can do what you want to do, but I think taking time off is very helpful. You know, it gives you perspective. You know, maybe you do a career, you find out really what you want to do. Because I know a lot of my classmates who are younger, they're in the space, you know, they're in law school, but they're like, do I really want to be a lawyer? Is this really what I want to do? Or is it something that like, my parents, was, my parents were, were lawyers, or like, I just didn't know what to do, so I went to law school. It, it's Law school is a very expensive, um, like, side gig if you don't really know if that's what you want to do. Like, it's not an experiment that you want to do if you're not sure. Because what, the reason I'm saying that because I got a cousin mm -hmm. that did not even close to it. He was 33 when he mm -hmm. got his stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hope you were you a real man. I, of course. Oh, we of got course. It. We got Ohio over here who we blew out. <laughs> I mean, y'all don't want me to get on y'all camera. So I mean, y'all might have to edit this out. I'm going to keep it funky with y'all. I don't know football, but then y'all lose stuff. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. right. Yo, I, was, I was at the game. Oh, you was at the game? This man was at the game, y'all. He was at the game.